Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror PSA presented by Scary Nerd, and as always, we are your hosts. I'm Paul. I'm Saul. And I'm Angie. The following is a public service announcement. Dream hunting Freddy Krueger returns once again to prowl the nightmares of Springwood's last surviving teenager and of a woman whose personal connection to Krueger may mean his doom. That's right, we watch 1991's Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, to close oh. out our Psycho Dad month of yes. June. Part six. Freddy part, part six. six. And it's oh so 90s. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this drips 90s from the very goddamn beginning. And it's beginning. also yeah. the most slapstick of all of all yeah. of the Freddies. It, it, was anybody else getting like Animaniacs vibes? I'm like, why bit, are we falling from bit. the sky with the generic like cartoon noise okay. and shit? No, I literally wrote down at one point, I'm like, Freddy's employing uh, Looney Tunes style acme gags when he puts the, the bed of nails mm-hmm. under John Doe. Yeah, he's not just uh, that though, but the uh, the the part where he kicks the John Doe out. Like yeah. when you when you get to the edge of town yeah, and you yeah. see the, the Oh the cutout. yeah, where he call, he yeah. falls the cutout oh, or yeah. whatever. This, this yeah. was complete uh, acme Looney Tunes. Oh but, yeah. No, and the first like kind of slapstick stuff that you get besides the cutout of him throwing him into the reality world yeah. is uh, if you if you say slapstick, then you slapstick. Have, then you have to say schmear. <laughs> I do say know. schmear. You can't say slapstick. <laughs> slapstick. Slapstick and schmear. Uh, uh, no, the, I love when he takes Carlos's hearing away, and then like he's just fucking with him behind it. Oh, like, he's just screaming, just yelling, screaming yeah, and yeah. breaking the fourth wall. Okay, like, I want to get into that scene a little bit more later, in more in depth, because <laughs> I love that for a few reasons. But yeah, it it's totally. This was the. It, it, I don't know, like, it was almost like it was like, all right, well, this is the last one. Because they really yeah, planned they on this being yeah. to the last, the last one. one. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they, they really were planning for it and, like, you know, every indication of what they did in the film and then the post credits or, like, the during credits just kind of yeah. montage yeah. of mm-hmm. all the movies. Yeah, um, it was basically a montage to Freddy's Yeah, it was, really? was kind of like, this Comedy. is my swan song. Watch me fly. The yeah. thing that bothered me about this movie, though, was Freddy's makeup. It was a was it a mask in this one? It looked I, like it a looked, mask. I, in yeah, this one. it really looked like a mask. The thing that I appreciate about the other movies is they actually make it look somewhat realistic. But yeah. this one, it just like that's clearly makeup. Yeah, it was. It I looked like know. a. Ma- yeah. It looked like a whole like uh, latex look, yeah, piece. It just looks like a big latex mask that they kind yeah. of like, you know. It's like the one and maybe I mean I know that he was really sick of yeah. sitting in yeah, the chair. Yeah, and, and maybe at this point the they were like, he was like, all right, if we're gonna come back, we're gonna end it. Then I'm willing to do this, but you gotta fucking put a mask on him. Yeah, we gotta makeup. get like, and, and I mean, I after so many yeah, years, who wants movies, to yeah. sit in a chair for eight hours a day getting you know almost ten years of your life? Another four movies. Three movies? Let's see. We two? have two or three no. because yeah, there's Freddy's. Or, uh, what is it? Well, all? the new nightmare. New nightmare. Yeah. Wes Craven's new nightmare Freddy and then Freddy versus Jason. Freddy versus Jason. Pretty, so okay, just so the two. two I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think going into Freddy versus Jason, like they had to like really entice him. And then, yeah. Which he says the Freddy versus Jason uh, makeup was his most favorite. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that they had like, it, and it was the 2000s, so they had updated yeah. a lot of. Oh yeah, it was probably know. like, look, we could make it a lot easier for you. There's application pieces we yeah. can put that aren't a full mask, mm-hmm. but, um, but yeah, the right off the bat in this movie, uh, we're talking about the whole, um, it, it felt different. You know, there was the acne gags and all that, but. The um, they also quote Nietzsche, yes, and Freddie, right? At the very yeah, beginning, yeah, see, that's what I'm like. This was Freddie Swan's because it's like, um, he who slumbers is you know, uh, you know, afraid or whatever. That's like, welcome to primetime, bitch, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Freddie. Like, <laughs> and then we go from that right into dream sequence where we get Wicked Witch Freddie. No, oh, yeah. well, uh, okay, before that, I was like. The whole computer screen that, you know, typed out the, the beginning part where it's like, you know, all the kids are dead and this and that. All those graphics. Yeah, all I was like, this, that totally reminded me of the Schwarzenegger Running Man. Like, just yeah. in the beginning, those graphics on the computer screen. I was screen. like, was are like, we playing Oregon Trail? Did I just get dysentery? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Springwood Trail. Yeah. Freddy got you. Uh-huh. And yes. I love when uh, John, because John Doe is all that kid's name is in the yeah. whole movie. Uh, I love when he comically falls down a hill for three solid minutes. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's See, just like, opening credit montage is that's what it thing, was. That's the thing about this movie. I'm like, there's a lot of good stuff in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of great filmmaking in this movie. And then there's stuff that's like you said, it's like, just slapstick. I'm like, 
do we really need this three minutes of him rolling down? And then have the camera roll down as well. No, because you that. get that like, good, oh, 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 as well. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like <laughs> this, okay, because can, can, in the canon of Freddy, like, there's a lot of great stuff in this film. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay, this adds to, like, his background. This adds to, like... The whole mythos of like just oh the his three character. demons I yeah. have forever yes. loved that lore. So like I love the lore that they bring to this movie, but I'm like other times it's just full on like like Jeez. really like we're yeah. just going Looney Tunes here. Mm-hmm. Like, well, and and to even further the '90s of it all, we have a baby Breckenmeyer. Yeah, he's first a baby. theatrical film. Yes, yes, he's just a little baby Breckenmeyer. I had completely forgot he was in this movie until I did we too. rewatched it. I did too. I was like, I, I didn't saw, even register yeah. that it's Breckenmeyer. Because I, I saw the name, like, wait a minute, I know that name. Why do I know that name? And then yeah. I looked him up, like, that's oh my, oh okay. Mm-hmm. And then obviously the total nineties of it, his is weird. I don't know what he was trying to do with his hair, but it was just you can tell. Oh, it was, it was 90s. that like art. Artie, like I have a long hair thing, but I'm gonna throw it back into like a weird uh, because the front of it, the front of, style. Yeah, yeah, like his, uh, like I'm an, uh, I'm an art dealer. Yeah, like, I'm like, like you're like a fucking 14 year old art dealer. Like, what yeah. do you do? Like mm-hmm. with your dress and like because it was long enough for him to put it in a ponytail in the back, and on the front of it, it's like he had his bangs out just yeah. in front of his face. I'm like, what it was the of? weird 90s mullet. Yeah, that, that it was like art you know. Mullet. Yeah, it was artsy and I like guess. Just, uh, uh, I'm going cool. through some stuff. I guess I don't know. Um, the, yeah, he has uh, daddy issues. His dad well, he does yeah. have daddy yeah. issues. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, okay, but you seem like you're rich. He is rich. He is. I know. And like his and dad's like, yelling at him. You, but they put you in like this shit. Like, why was this place under construction the whole time? <laughs> it was just question. the like, ghettoist. It was always like run down and be like, we have no money, but there's yeah, so many like, kids uh, in here. And I'm like, the fat guy's rich kid is in there. Wouldn't he be like pumping? Some I know money this. In? This seemed like it was. Um, like a like a free shelter for like runaways yeah. or something. Yeah, and like, Cause like cause it, where the, the cops yeah, dump the cops off random like, people. Yeah, the cops are like, I'm not doing the paperwork. Just go dump them over there. So I'm like, all right, then this is like a free shelter. Like, why is this rich kid here? So they come on like a halfway house. Yeah, that's what yeah, it seems like. Yeah, it was like, like a halfway house, like a shelter. But they had a dream like therapist a, <laughs> on retainer. For whatever reason. <laughs> but, but okay, here's my question, though. Was Doc just into dreams on the side, or what was his actual thing? Because I know she uh, she was a, a therapist. Maggie was the therapist. So I'm thinking, yeah. was he some sort of therapist as well? Because he was saying how he was working with Tracy, right? And yeah, like, but he works with her doing yeah, like, he's like physical 20, stuff. Yeah, he's like 23 minutes uh, you know, a week with these kids or whatever. So sometimes he could have been he, something like that. He could have been that. He could have been the other, yeah. the other therapist. So he's like a dream therapist, a maybe uh, she's trainer. The, she's uh, the intake therapist. There you he's go. the mm. he's the, like the long term. Like all right, here's now that we know how fucked up you are. Here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how everyone is constantly on edge in this movie too. Like they go from zero to screaming about oh, yeah. it, like just all the time. Like John, when he, when Maggie first asks him a question, he's like, "I don't know." Okay, like he just gets so mad. Well, okay, well he's been up for three days at he least. Has. He's been awake as long as he can remember. So how yeah. come you think you would be? Well, um, even when Maggie goes to talk to Doc later, she's like, "Can anybody talk about anything with dreams?" I'm like, "Bitch, <laughs> calm down." Well, at that point, she was already kind of fucked up because she was saying the whole everyone water in this tower movie thing. Is fucked up. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to go back to the beginning real quick. The the falling to earth thing really reminded me of that Michael Jackson video. Um, I think it was the black and white video where mm. someone like falls in. It's Macaulay Culkin's in it as well. Yeah. I remember Macaulay um, Culkin being yeah. in it, but I don't remember the fall. It, it's not, nobody falls, but like it's like the camera falls from the sky down and then it goes like through a neighborhood, almost like the HBO thing used to do. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then it goes into the house. And then, yeah. I don't remember that. This part. is like I just totally remember fucking the, 90s. The like, Close up of the faces that all merged into the like, yeah, a, you know yeah. what I mean. That's I think that's what I, her, I think that was the end of the video. This is yeah, like that was the, the end of the video. This is how the video. I do remember Macaulay Culkin being in it. What a weird life that the dude 90- had. Okay, because it makes me also think. I'm like, why were there so many weird cameos? And then we have a weird cameo with Tom and Roseanne here. Yeah. Uh, like, those kids are assaulted. They are. Yes. <laughs> Let me. What did yes. I write down? Roseanne molested these children. You know, they were really, really weren't children. Oh, I put the children are accosted by Roseanne. Like, she's touching her <laughs> face to theirs. Like, no, bitch. No. Okay. All right. Oh, um, and then Tom Arnold comes down and yells at him. He's like, see what yeah. you did? See like, what ah, you done did? We got to get out of this that's, fucking town. That's literally what he was like. See what you done did? Mm-hmm. Okay, and I have to say this. I'm sorry, Ohio, but Tom and Roseanne kind of represent your state because of this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I this love is what they're... I think of Ohio people. That and, be, and you kind of deserve it with your whole OH thing. So. And I'm not oh, sure. Oh, it freaking drives me nuts. I'm not sure if it's sad or like. 
the do you see the credits? They're they're credited as Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Tom Arnold. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, oh no. 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 Uh, if I remember correctly, I think she has a tattoo on her ass of Tom Arnold's name. Oh. That's nothing anyone needs to think about. I think, yeah. Um, so, yeah. There, at least there's, you know, the credits are one thing. If you get a tattoo of your ex-husband. Yeah. How many, how no. many ex-husbands ago? Uh, like, I don't even know. Speaking but, of yeah. the, the center that's always under uh, renovation, did you see the ghetto-ass van they were driving? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, so then I'm like, okay, like, what is this rich dude just letting his son right? live in squalor for nothing, basically? Mm-hmm. He's like... You either shape up or you're just gonna, that, that was his thing. He's like, yeah. you want to live, you want to be was poor? two miles okay, away. Okay, that is the other thing where it's like, yeah. okay, you have this whole fucking thing that this is like, in 10 years in the future, you know, all the kids have been, you know, murdered and this and that. And then when they get in the fucking van, it's like Springwood, two miles. I'm like, two miles mm-hmm. away, two yeah. miles away, and you don't know who this kid is. Two miles away, and you can't identify anyone. I'm like, you I guys go, haven't heard of Freddy at very yeah, I least. I go grocery shopping farther than yeah. two fucking mm-hmm. miles yeah. away. I'm like, how do you not know? I'm like, this could be like, you know, your buddy's house two miles away. Like, yeah. yeah. Springwood. I don't know. I've never heard. It makes two fucking miles away. There's a sign right there. That says that. Yeah. That mm-hmm. is, oh. So it's just like, that's what I'm saying. Like, this movie had so many good things about it, but then there were so many like, really? Like, yeah. Two miles away? <laughs> it's a lot like, of movie stuff that we're just me? like, we'll just put that in there and nobody will notice. Like, yeah. no, we notice, guys. Uh, but they take their saddest or the most ghetto van I've ever seen and they drive it to the saddest carnival ever. Oh, yeah. It was creepy, too. It yes. was. Like, there was bugs in the pie. I was like, who is uh, this coming to uh, this carnival? On. What did I write down? Because they're okay. Now, that is an actual clown of nightmares. Mm. Yes. He, had, he was a sad, deflated clown full of cigarette smoke and bad intentions. Yeah, you know oh. how that clown I'm smells. I'm like, that that clown scared me more than Freddy does in mm. any of these movies, even the first one. Because <laughs> like, we know that I'm clown like, is that, in reality. I, I, I'm like, that clown's been to prison. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there is no one that willingly dresses up as a clown that isn't struggling in life. Uh-huh. Like, you're not going to willingly do that for fun. And if you yeah. are someone that willingly does that for fun, yeah, there's something wrong with that clown. It's probably his community service. Oh, oh why would community you do- service. <laughs> <laughs> like, in you gotta Springwood, do who? Yeah. What are these cops that are making people do community service in Springwood? <laughs> they know, can't they, even keep any kids what's alive. The, what's the cutoff age for Freddie to be like? Okay, you're not a child anymore. Like, fuck. It. Is it 18? Like, you live. I you, guess. You, you, I would up, say 18. Like, you get to your 18th birthday, then like, fuck. Like, fuck. I not an adult. All right, well, you're I'm lucky. Out. Cause yeah, I didn't get the whole "there's ten year difference" thing. I'm like, the, the what? Like when they were in the school, and she was like, "All these classes, there's they're different, like every ten years or whatever." So I'm like, nobody lived for ten years. Like I don't get what what they meant by that. I don't like, think they meant anything by it. I think it was just background exposition. So then there was no point anywhere. in saying that. I wanted the Freddy teacher guy to actually teach us about the history of Freddy. Something he's like, that would have been he's cool. Like, welcome to Freddy 101. I'm like, okay, give us the goods now. And how come no one noticed when he pointed to the fucking board that said Freddy's child was taken away? And I'm like, this is 1966 on there, clearly. I'm yeah. like, John Doe, you were not born in 1966, no. moron. Yeah, and I think it was more I'm of like, like to oh. be like, there are hints that he's not him. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm like, uh, Maggie, of the two of you, which one was probably born in 1966 here? And well, Maggie like, really was like, none of this is right. I think she right. was in denial. No, yeah. Maggie was like, this is all just crazy. I'm like, then bitch, why are you here? Exactly. Why are you still here? See, that's the thing. Like, just own your truth, people. <laughs> like, if there's, if there's a horror PSA, like, don't be that person that's holding some information back. Like, if you're like, okay, there's something weird going on and I want to go there and I think you should come with me because it'll help, you know, bring up memories for both of us or either of us or one of us at the very least right it just be honest with people because then you fuck the whole thing up also if you see roseanne coming at you run don't let her touch her face to yours that's not anything anybody needs don't let roseanne touch it the thing that i remember too when i first watched this was many many years ago i remember now looking back on it all the false flags that they made you believe on who was actually freddie's kid because remember at one point i remember thinking okay they obviously want you to believe that it's john doe and then at one point, I'm like, okay, maybe it's Tracy. Because I remember they do the whole thing where they said, oh, where's your daddy? And she says, and she says something along the lines to where it make you, could make you think that it was Freddie. Oh, I see him every time I close my eyes or yeah. some shit like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the for Tracy? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, sad side note on that. Um, she actually kind of remembered repressed feelings of her being uh-huh. molested as a child when she started filming this, so. Hopefully yeah, she got adults some help. are awful. <laughs> Hopefully she got some help. Get some uh, therapy. The, the, okay, okay. 
I need to go back and say this because we've kind of glossed over this. Um, Carlos, do you remember Carlos? I know I want to remember him from somewhere. Where do you remember Carlos from? Fuck. Come on, man. You showed I wanna, me, so. I showed her already. Mm-hmm. So. I know. Do you, okay, do you remember the Pizza Hut commercials for that Bigfoot pizza? Yes. Carlos was the It's Bigfoot guy. What? Carlos is the It's Bigfoot <laughs> guy. Yes. I pulled up a commercial from I found on YouTube and I showed her. I'm like, wait, because we had to stop the movie. I'm like, is yeah. Carlos the fucking Bigfoot pizza guy? And I looked it up. I'm like, oh, my God, that's him. I have an interesting side story to this, right? It's funny. Because um, I wrote down, I'm sorry, but when I see Carlos, all I think of is, it's Bigfoot, because that's what he would yell in the commercial. That yeah. was his catchphrase, right? I remember um, it now. Um, so- my cousin and his friends, like when we were teens, right? When we were, um, you know, when the commercial was out, right? We were at a family function and I was telling, you know, like, we were talking about something like, hey, have you seen that Bigfoot commercial? Like, it's so stupid. You know, we would just laugh about it or whatever. And he was like, it's funny because we have this guy that we would call Bigfoot. Looking back, I'm like, it's probably this tall, lanky, awkward teen just because, you know, we were all puberty age or whatever. Yeah. Right? Um, and they had some other guy that used to do like the, the, the it's Bigfoot line randomly to torment this fucking kid. Oh and I'm like, God. kids were He's horrible. Just yep, tall. <laughs> just tall. Like, that's all it was. But it's so funny how random shit like that happens. Like it was like, it was like the poor kid was just like, I, I sprouted over the summer and I, it's called Bigfoot. I grew. And then this there was goddamn, literally nothing I could do about <laughs> and it. And then this stupid ass Pizza Hut commercial comes out. All of a sudden, randomly, they'll be sitting in class and like the, the dude foot. would just be like, it's Bigfoot. <laughs> like, everyone. I'm like, I'm like, the only thing you can do with that, children. yeah, anything. <laughs> all you could do is lean into it, like, yeah, big really foot. Like, that's all you could do. I remember what in our grade school, we you had a short, chubby kid, and I think Street Fighter had just hit, <laughs> so they started calling him E Honda. <laughs> it was so messed I, up. I really was think our Asian? generation was no. terrible. Okay. Awful. Like, just, our you, parents you taught Mexican. us to be mean. They're like, no, yes. it's it's better if you be mean because it'll it'll toughen people up, and that's not true. <laughs> It's not true. So yeah, it was so messed up. They started calling him E Honda. So everybody started calling him Honda, and they're like, "Why do you guys call him Honda?" He's like, "He looks like E Honda from Street Fighter." No. <laughs> and then when you noticed, when they would tell you that, then it just snowballed into that, and everybody—that's what everybody called him. Yeah, they really can't. You can't do it. I mean, you just have to lean into it. There's really nothing. Yeah, you can do. Yeah, you just gotta lean it's into like, it. All right, okay. That's all there is to do. Because if, child, you, if you fight against children. it harder, it's just gonna make it worse. <laughs> and <laughs> like, you just have to lean into it. It is. Horrible, horrible children. Oh, yeah, mm. but uh, again, I don't understand why Maggie was like, you guys take the van. I know you guys were trying to yeah, run away, but take this miles. van and go yeah. back. to like, it's Why don't miles. you guys just wait? I would just been like, it's two miles. Walk, walk back your home. asses home. And if you don't want to go, I don't care. Because right. it's not my problem. Right, and they can't get out of this town. And I yeah, love when Carlos van, gets though. stuck in the map. Like, it's like the map says we're fucked, so I can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, so oh, when he tries like, to unfold it. Cheesy yeah. Yeah. one-liner, like, the map says we're fucked. Oh, so many cheesy, like so much cartoon. I mean, Freddy kills Carlos with a uh, uh, chalkboard that yeah. he's scratching, that he is stretched out that comically. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that he, okay, after he stretches it out comically, he's doing like this air hump thing where he's like yeah, rolling like his arm it, around. Yeah. Like, he's, like, he's just going full bore. He doesn't care anymore. He's like, this is the end. Fuck it. I'm never yep. doing this character again. Mm-hmm. I, don't I do like the pin, do- <laughs> pin drop thing that he was doing. Oh, though. the pin drop thing always got me. And the the Carlos with the, the Q-tip in the ear, oh, that got yeah. me me every time yeah, as a child yeah. when i first saw that i remember fe- you know that feeling when you go too far in with the q-tip yeah. i remember getting that feeling in my ear just watching that scene like no 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 don't do it don't do it it's awful yes uh but yeah okay, it always I, got me i do want to talk about that whole scene because i really appreciate that they went there with that scene because all until, the way through you mean or? uh well okay the sound scene in this movie right I've always loved that the movie goes there. Um, not many movies play with sound the way that this movie does. So I was like, good for them for going there. Um, if you think, what's that movie? Is it is it Hush or whatever uh, with the chick from yeah, Hunting Hush. and Kill Hustle? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's very few movies that will play with sound, you know, other than music or tones or shit like that. But I'm like, very few movies actually play with sound where it's like you are experiencing what the character is experiencing and yeah. not being able to hear shit. Mm-hmm. And then... If it was less comical, I think that scene would have been way more suspenseful. Oh, um, it got oh, me yeah. as a kid. Like, I mean, it does. It does. I didn't especially... see the comedy as much as a yeah. child when I first. Because I, mean, yeah. I remember yeah. renting this and seeing it for the first time. You probably don't see the comedic issues as much as because you I probably remember I was just, just go with for it Freddy. As a kid. Yeah. 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 yeah, like you're just rooting for Freddy because you're used to. Oh yeah. The I, kills I, by at the time at, at point six, we're like, well, yeah. he's gonna kill him anyway. 
way. So yeah. this is how you're going to do it, Fred. Like, yeah. oh, I mean, that's, fuck with him, Fred. that's the thing is like Freddie was such a weird thing because we all fell in love with like Freddie's bravado. So at certain yeah. points, we all started rooting for Freddie versus the teenagers, yeah. you know, like. And so I think that's that this one just kind of gave it an ode to Freddie kills. Yeah. It Freddy's was just really deaths. like. How haven't we killed someone before? Kind of mm-hmm. thing. And we do what we get. Um, you know, Carlos's head explodes. Yeah. And so, like, he fucks with them more than he actually like murders them. Like in the in the yeah. past Freddy movies, it's always like you know you see the glove going across yeah. them, or like yeah. you know they get gutted. Or here's my issue with what Carlos did. He's saying that he's extremely tired and he's looking for a bed, right? And they're in this weird, old, abandoned, dilapidated They do a B&E house. real quick to go yeah, find do, a place they, to they sleep. They do a B&E. I'm like, what are we doing? Okay. Sleep okay. in the but, van. But look, at, okay, but look at these fucking kids, though. They've yeah. spent a night in a creepy, you know, abandoned house before. I no, mean, and uh, I'm all uh, for that. Like when they, yeah. Tracy, yeah, come on. When they Tracy find has. the house, I was like, yeah, okay, that looks like, you yeah. know, just an, an abandoned house. But when they go inside and they see how gross it is, I'm like, I ain't sleeping in that fucking house. Here's the thing that got me with him. He finds the bed. He sees it and then what is he starts petting and he sees all that dust i'm like motherfucker i'm not gonna lay down on that shit the one thing i told kim was like if that was me i would flip the mattress Mm -hmm. Uh, and then again these kids are runaways and they're living in a free shelter sleep in the van they've slept in worse trust me Mm -hmm. they didn't care and it was a plot point so (laughs) it's a weird point of arguing yeah that's true they've slept in worse because even when they have that freak out look at the Look at the uh, the the apartment building that Carlos was in, where the yeah. mom beat his ass in the hallway. I'm like, this was great casting, cause yeah. cause the um the mom. I'm like, that looks like that lady looks like a bitch. Like, yeah. I want to punch that lady. Like, yeah, I know she's seen great they, other they, stuff before too. <laughs> yeah, like she was just great at it. And um the the oh was the fat dad. What did I wrote down? I'm like, uh, da, da. oh, uh, Tracy's dad. Yes, the like, the child molester. We're yeah. like that guy touches yes. kids. The, yep. We, oh, the, mm-hmm. give me some honey. Yeah. Right Whoa. Down. The molesty give daddy some sugar. Oh no, give daddy some honey is what he was saying. Mm-hmm. The molesty give daddy some honey guy with his multicolored stained wife beater with suspenders was perfectly cast. Yes. Um, um, I've always loved the mushed version face of his. Oh, after like she's beaten him. After she beats him and he's standing, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I love, love that whole scene because I want to go back to the house real quick because you completely glossed over all of Johnny Depp's cameo, his drug PSA oh. <laughs> and Spencer's death. Which was funny because he was doing drug PSAs. Yeah. Yeah. Back because then. of oh, yeah, like, I actual remember. The yeah. drug PSAs. I remember the drug PSAs. And now he's just an old drug addict. So. Uh, <laughs> is he a drug addict or alcoholic? Either way, we digress. See, yeah. that's the thing uh, that sticks to sticks in my head about the 90s was those this is your brain on drugs commercials because i remember it so many i remember how dumb don't. they were yeah 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 i remember thinking as a kid like okay i've seen people on drugs right yeah. like i mean we were yeah. just in the world right and i was like why would you do something that does that to you <laughs> 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 like we've all seen druggies and like yeah i don't want to be that guy so i'm not gonna do drugs yeah i'm like if you want to you know Dare should have just brought in, you know, hobos that were drug addicts. I'm like, right, like now that they cute. have those yeah. smoking PSAs, right, with those yeah. people like missing yeah. parts of their mouth. Like, do that about yeah. drugs. Like, that's what you need to show people. Yeah, is there's the some scary shit. Like, uh, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Like, you, yeah, you, like, you, you literally. Blah, 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 blah. If you legitimately want to keep kids from doing drugs, like show them what drugs. Right, don't do. show me Don, Johnny Depp with an egg. That's yeah. not gonna do anything. Show me a drug addict. Who's yeah, because like, like don't do cause, drugs, cause kids. Horny yes, teen girls are just gonna happens. be like, oh my god, it's Johnny Depp. Like, what was that commercial yeah, about? No, no. I don't fucking know. I don't know. No, like you guys just no. You like, scare yeah, you, when you gotta you, traumatize you, them. That's like what those. I'm saying. Like, like they used to do back in when they would show the the, the old fifties uh, like car accident videos to oh, kids. Yeah. They'd be like, this is what happens if you don't put your seatbelt on. Oh yeah, or this is what happens when you drink and drive. Like yeah. Like those, like the most thing we had, like we had a, we had it in high school, one of those things where it's like, uh, we had a, a wrecked car they put in the middle of the football field and they had the, like the, the helicopter come land yeah. and take the fake body away. Like, oh yeah, I remember This that. is what happened in 12 minutes. Like, I'm like, oh Jesus Christ. And, like it was all in like the football field and like, they're oh, like we just 15 had... minutes in, you're finally getting to the hospital and they're dead by this. I'm like, it was, I'm <laughs> we like, didn't this have doesn't... that big of a production. Yeah, like this, I'm like, no. I'm like, you bring a fucking drug addict into a third grade classroom and be like, and that was the first time I saw a dick for crack. To show them meth teeth. Like the show skits. Yeah, like legitimately. Like. Yeah. Show them some meth teeth. Show yeah. them like show people cardboard boxes where heroin addicts are just yeah. passed out. Yeah. 
All going zoned like out, that. man. I'm like, 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 just shoot that. Just, just like, okay, we're going to. Does this look like you want this to be your yes. life? We're like, going don't on do a field that. Trip. Yeah. We're going on a field trip. Let me go. Okay, Tim. Skid Row is where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're all going to stay. Was it the, the stay on Maine or what was it called? Yeah, something that, like that. It's closed now, though. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, horrible. Uh, Wow, fuck, from the Night Stalker Hotel. Yeah, but uh, Johnny Depp's cameo basically leads us into Spencer getting sucked into a video game. And again, it's so comical. Freddy's got okay playing the, video games. No, okay, before the power the, glove. No, 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 before the video game part. The the, the trip out scene. Oh, the oh, Inag- yeah. in the, the Inagata Inagata Davida Davida scene, yeah. Scene? I, like, yes. <laughs> I know, and I was like, like why are we going back to the 60s? He's a stoner, but he's a 90s yeah, stoner. I know, like, he's a 90s stoner, but I'm like, all right, I can get on. I can get in on this. I'm like, there. That's the thing. I'm like, this movie has so many like weird. Like, it was like an experimental thing. They're like, we're just gonna fucking just do gonna it. Throw a bunch of. They're shit like, in it's here. the last one. Happens. Fuck it, man. We're yeah. gonna do it and just you know what? We're gonna have a trip out scene for a few seconds before he plays in a fucking video game. I know, and Freddy I doesn't do it, man. anything yeah. to Spencer other than just play him in a video game. The most comical thing about that is when you saw him walking around in the real world, how he's doing the weird little marching thing. Oh like, yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah. When he was pretending he was in the video, yeah, game. and I love how he's like bouncing around. It's so comical, and like when they follow his head going into the ceiling and shit. Mm. <laughs> I was just like, "What is this?" Yes, and and it added like a boom, boom, yep. boom. Like mm-hmm. it was the straight Looney Tunes shit again. Yep. yep. And then Freddie finishes up with "I beat my high score." <laughs> like it's <laughs> great so, graphics. Yeah, great graphics. Like he's just playing. Like he's not even in this movie that much. No, he's not. He just randomly shows up. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I love, though, when they're In like, the of Eden, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. Right. Like after Spencer goes and after John Doe is uh, falls on the, the bed of nails or whatever. And but, disappears. And what? Disappears? That doesn't explain. Yeah. That, I don't get that part either. I'm like, but I love how the entire disappear? time. Because what is it? She hits him with the two by four. And he goes no, 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 no. I'm oh, no. Okay, you're talking about when he dies or when? Yeah, I'm talking about when he dies. Yeah, oh, like when, okay, when yeah, he dies yeah, yeah. after he falls into the bed of spikes or okay. whatever, and um, Maggie is holding him, and then she screams or whatever. Because we have Tracy who's like, we need the fuck out of here. Apparently, he's been involved in some shit that oh, she's no. like, we need to get the fuck out of here. I wrote now. my note like, says that I love, she's I've witness always murders. loved the yes. spike wounds and how Tracy was like, we got to get the fuck out of here the entire time. Yeah. She's like, no, we got to go. Like, we yes. got to go leave his ass. We like, have we got 35 to go. seconds before the cops are here. I'm like, yeah. nobody called him. Like, why are you so, like, <laughs> you didn't do anything, Tracy. We don't yeah, but, who's gonna, <laughs> but at the same time, Tracy's like, who the fuck is going to believe us mm. about yeah. the shit that just happened that we saw? But Tracy tries to go. This? When when Tracy and John Godot go into the dream to try to help Spencer, Tracy tries to buck up to Freddie. She's yeah, like, yeah, she okay, does. let's do this. <laughs> I thought, I've always thought the uh, the board to the face, um, and then when he falls into the table and like disappears, that oh yeah, that I think yeah. that's what you were talking about. That I've always loved. I'm like that's a, that's a cool effect. Oh I'm yeah, like, the yeah. transition. And then I love how she's like two seconds later, like I told you, motherfucker, you could have just waited, and your face won't hurt when you wake up. I know. I love how he slaps her to try to piss her off, and she just fucking dicks him. Well, she's he like, knew it would you. work. He's mm-hmm. like, I know this bitch. So this is gonna work. <laughs> she doesn't like to be chick. touched. She's gonna be like, yeah, yeah. Tracy, Tracy wants to beat Freddie's ass the whole time. When she, when even she goes to sleep, like then yeah. after they get back, and nobody remembers Carlos or Spencer or John or whatever, like. Tracy's just like, all right, go on to bed. Like, she's fully aware. Yeah, she's yeah. back hitting the punching bag like, all right, motherfucker. Yeah, like, she's fully aware. She's like, all right, I'm going to go to sleep. This is going to happen, and we're going to go toe-to-toe. And, like, she does get thrown off by her dad, but she she escapes. Yeah. Tracy survives. She she gets out of the dream. She escapes Freddy and her creepy-ass dad. Well, she was able to figure out what to do, too, because what? When they're doing the creepy-ass dad thing, she realizes, okay, I got to get out of here, and she sees the... The stove or whatever need be and put yeah. your arms to it. Yeah. yeah, she pulls a Nancy because Nancy does that with the pipe in the yeah. first one. Yes, mm-hmm. um, I found it funny when Carlos was like, "You wouldn't do that, would you, man?" I'm like, "You don't know Freddy, so yeah, obviously you don't know Freddy. you're like, mm-hmm. like, did you really just think this is your weird dream still at that point?" Like, I don't know. Like, it just the case I just threw me off. I'm like, obviously we know Freddy. You don't know Freddy, and you're not from. Apparently, two miles away, you don't hear about any of the murders of every yeah. child in this town because mm-hmm. it's two miles away and, you know, communication barrier, apparently. It's, there's such a dramatic scene when Maggie goes to her mother's house and she's looking through all the adoption paperwork and she's like, they wouldn't, the mom's like, they wouldn't tell me who it was. There was rules about no contact and Did Maggie you, goes, uh, there's been contact. <laughs> Did you catch that she yelled out, mother? Oh, yeah. Just mm-hmm. like Nancy did. Mm-hmm. Um, 
when they go to that orphanage, I, I wrote down, I'm like, hey, let's go out to this orphanage in, you know, middle of the night and see if we can uh, get some information. People like, oh, okay, this lady's batshit crazy. Yeah. And I'm just going to go through all these uh, children's drawings. I know. Over why here. were they like, still in this town? I like, don't everywhere know. they go, it's just one lone person, like, being fucking crazy. Like, no, no, no help right. here. Yeah, I was like, you got uh, to get out. <laughs> I wrote down, I'll just dig through these 30 year old kids' drawings. And oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, here's the clue we were yep. looking for. Yeah, K. Kruger, right, right there. there on top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you. And I remember you, and you, and you. This lady's crazy. Let's go. Mm-hmm. The thing that I do love most about the movie is the lore you get into Freddy because you get those flashback scenes. Oh, yeah, of him playing with the daughter okay. and him I, with his I, wife. I want to and... get into those scenes, but is there anything else that we want to talk about before? Because I, oh, I definitely want to go into those, into the lore and the canon of Freddy. Uh, well, yeah, I love how uh, after finding out that she's been adopted and pretty much she thinks that she's Freddy's child, right? Yeah. Maggie just drugs herself to sleep, yes. which seems like I, yeah. a really super stable choice. No, I found it funny that what when she wakes up, like the pill bottle, like it looks like somebody dropped it and it pops open on the on her nightstand or whatever. I'm like, yeah. was this Freddie's like fatherly way of like you take too many pills? I thought she just knocked it over with her arm or something. Know. Freddy's being a dad for the first time yeah. in his life. No, because Freddy's like, every town has an Elm Street because he, he reveals that yeah. he came out yeah. of her, basically. So I don't think the head is what, he goes to into her well, to, he, to, he, to get he, out? Yeah. yeah. He. Oh, my God. Into her brain. No, wait, wait, wait. What did he write? It was like, it's traveling time. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. He's got to get ready. He's going uh, like, on a trip. But he did the, that weird, like, almost like Vogue thing where he puts oh, his... Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Well, he's got to get ready. He's got to so, go like, through oh, physical changes. <laughs> like, that super cheesy, like, late 80s, early 90s CGI. And he's like... Oh, oh. <laughs> I always thought wow. it was a weird choice when she's in her dream and then all of a sudden she's just in the little girl's dress with the pigtails. I'm like, that's, yeah. that's a weird choice. Yeah. Where she's all of a sudden an adult and where I'm like, huh? Oh. Yeah. yeah. It was I'm a little like, weird. I'm like, I guess. Like, you're... You're reliving it again. I know what you're going for. Like that's yeah. what you're trying to convey that she's reliving it. You know, but more conscious as an adult now. But mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm like, okay, let's talk about the Freddy lore. If there's nothing else we want yes. to talk about. Well, yeah, because um, after Tracy gets out of her dream, they all kind. Of, well, he goes after the doc too first. I love that oh, yeah. we don't know the doc is in a dream until the end of that sequence. Yeah, because yeah. like the doc was like straight, like I'm gonna go find this motherfucker. Yafet Koto, by the way, yeah, from mm-hmm. Alien mm-hmm. and yeah. Running Man. Since I mentioned Running Man earlier, uh, but yeah, I love in that scene. I love how he goes through all his deaths by cutting off his fingers and it's like, just keep ticking. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I always loved that as a kid to the first time. So I'm like, yep, that's true. Yep, fire. Yep, yep. they tried doing okay. this. They yep. tried doing they, that. They, they yep. bury you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then the doc does the smart thing again, going back to the first one where he figures out, oh, I can bring him into the actual world. Yeah. Because what, he grabs a piece yeah. of a sweater? It's funny that they're like, first they tried this, then I'm like, but in the first one they brought you out and then burned you, and now you're going to end this movie by doing the Almost, same yeah. thing. That's like, the only way to kill him. I'm like, you got to explode him. him. You're going to yes. bring him out and then, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, but the thing that was funny before we get into the lore thing that I do want to bring up is towards the end of it where they realize, okay, we do need to bring him out and they bring him out. Did you notice that the doc had nunchucks? Oh, yeah. He did. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. Uh, he, because he threw them he, when yeah, he, he was pissed. Them. Yeah, yeah, Tracy has some sort out. of like, I don't even know what it was. It I a, know, a like, saw blade? No, it was, it was it? like, it was like a weird, Cause, like cause they, wheel? No, they, they show it later when they're going through the cage and it's there again. So I don't know yeah. if that was an accident or if she just put it down in there when they opened it. Mm-hmm. But it's off to the side and it's like almost like a weird looking sculpture in the middle with like a ring around it that's spiked. Yeah. So it's like she was able to hold the center part, which is like almost like a. So it's like Zena's thing that she threw no, kind like of. The, <laughs> the, the middle looked like. Um, like Venus de Milo, like yeah. it was like you know mm-hmm. that that sculpture yeah. of a woman thing. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, like, I don't know. it's one of those weird things where people that want to create weapons it's an create something. No, um, okay. <laughs> if we're okay, I just want to mention real quick that um, in the video game scene um, when he's like, now I'm playing with power and all that. Um, he, they did not have permission from Nintendo to use that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they probably felt since there was a nightmare video game on NES that yeah. came out a few years earlier that like, hey, we're part of the family. Fuck it, what are they gonna do? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, like they can't sue us. Okay, okay. The canon that they introduce in this, um, 
that alone is worth sitting through this movie. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're a Freddy fan, you're going to watch this movie mm-hmm. anyway. But yeah. Um, and his walk down Freddy's memory lane. I yes. love that. Yes, because I'm like, okay, this gives you backstory. This gives you more lore. I mean, I love the lore that it gave you. Mm-hmm. Um, when we get into um, when Maggie is the adult version of her child self and she's going through, when she goes into his little workshop room yes. while mm-hmm. he's out. Oh, you mean when she's still in the dream? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. When she goes into the little workshop room, um, I wrote down like the little workshop is like Buffalo Bill style kink and violence that yeah. gives such a rich history to Freddy with just sheer imagery. Because all you do is you go in and you see and he has all those different gloves that he's yeah. made. Yeah. And like it really gave me I'm like this is a, a Buffalo Bill 7 type of like kind of like it gives you so much history on him as a character in that short scene because yeah, like yeah. just see- that stuff like just by seeing those different iterations of those gloves i'm like each glove because to these type yeah. of people i'm like each glove have a, has a specific purpose yeah a specific and different purpose than the than the last one i like this part because we get to see so much of freddie as a human yeah and yeah. so it is that he's not this dream demon it's that he's a serial killer and like the, it's literally like and... freddie's origins yeah. of like where he went so i'm like i've always and thought... even when they go back into like um him as a child it shows how disturbed he is after he hammers that yeah. It was a gerbil. I don't even know a what hamster. it was. Hamster or something like that. But yeah, they go back to showing like how he's been crazy this whole time, but also the town has hated him the whole time as well. And then we got to mention another yeah. cameo from Alice Cooper. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Alice Cooper <laughs> plays his... Uh, Arizona's his only Vincent Fernier. Uh, yeah. His weird, old, weird stepdad. I would say it's either stepdad or dad or something Well, like I mean, that. it's going to be like a foster dad yeah. or yeah, something, something like, like that. Because, I mean... Um, the interesting thing about Alice Cooper being in this movie, um, he didn't w- really like to be in the movies too much because um, most of the time they were like, we want you to dress up in your makeup. And this yeah. and the Alice Cooper, he, yeah. He really enjoyed that he's like, he, he's like, I'll do it, but you know, can I just be a regular character in the movie? And yeah. that's the character they chose for him. So yeah. like, it really works out. And because I've always felt like if they did, a, if they redid Nightmare again, and if we went further back into yeah. like Freddy's actual like you know life and leading up to him and all that, this like this movie like you'd have to go off of this canon like you'd have to include this stuff because it's such a like I said it's such a rich history of the character that you could build upon and I really wish that like they'd explored more of this in the series originally because but I mean it's one of those things where they never planned it to be yeah. as big as it was so they didn't know what the fuck they were because the other thing I like expect. about it too is you even see the parents going to his basement or whatever and he'd be in throwing throwing the the, co- the Molotov cocktails in there and burning them okay yeah and I love when a, we meet the demons that give him his yeah, job we had a debate about that because when they go there it looks like he's in some cabin I think it was just bad set choices. It's not Cause, a cabin. Yeah, because a... well, they show the background of all the people outside, mm-hmm. and it looks like you know there's pine trees. And then in the interior, it looks like that this is like cabin furniture. Like they yeah. had a, there was a little bed there that was made with like like the wood posts, like actual like trees and stuff. I'm like, it looks like they ran him off into a cabin, which obviously in yeah. the first movie doesn't, you know, mention any of that. I do like that this movie ties him to that actual house on 1428 Elm. Yeah. No other movie, I think, it was just kind of like Nancy's house. Yeah. Like, no one ever said, and it was always like, oh, that was the, the you know, Nancy's house from the first one. So I like, know, but nobody ever talks about um, Johnny Depp's house. I mean, the bed ate that dude. They don't. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, but, they, they, <laughs> but I don't know. Like, well, between the two houses, the weird shit that happened, like, okay. It happened one, in both houses. But one, the one yeah. across, then maybe that's why. They didn't ever show across the street because yeah. like, we're both condemned. Like, I mean, houses. like, yeah, Nancy's. Mom burned up in the bed or whatever, but uh, Johnny Depp's bed ate him. Yeah. And <laughs> no, that would that would have been a that would have been a thing for part two because I mean they move into Nancy's house like we got a good deal. Well, yeah, that, that, that was the whole thing about part two was it was just Nancy's house because he finds her diary and stuff like that. See, and, like, and that's, that's how and, they and that's it. the thing too. I'm like, if they connected Freddie to the house originally, like that would have been you know made more sense to me yeah. other than like he's connected to the house just because of Nancy or whatever. Yeah. And then like, we get the the fight scene between him and his daughter, and I wrote quickly to the store of confiscated weapons. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how they mentioned 
uh, early in the movie, like, oh, I'm going to go put this in the confiscated locker. Because thought, Spencer that, made a pipe bomb? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's the other fucking yeah. thing, too. Like, uh, There's Spencer's, this rich kid learning to make Spencer's pipe bombs. Spencer's making pipe bombs. Before the internet. Because the yeah. internet wasn't widely available. An- <laughs> anarchist cookbook. Mm. Well, there you go. People all the time used to talk about that. In the I was just showing those kids how to protect themselves. From who? <laughs> yeah. From who, oh, fuck, okay. well, Even in the first one, Nancy just goes and buys a book on booby traps. So this is like, true. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is true. He's rich. She can go to any bookstore mm-hmm. and like, yeah, uh, let Spencer smoke weed if he's building pipe bombs I know, and shit. Spencer and like, needs yeah. to chill. <laughs> like, Tracy, back off. Are you going to pipe right? bomb your Well, because they man. talk about earlier how he set his dad's car on fire, so, yeah. That's right. He out there Spencer committing arson. Spencer starts fire. Yeah. So a pyromaniac and now graduating into making pipe bombs. All because his dad doesn't love him? There's something else going on. Well, it was because I think his dad wanted to be too, too much like him. But that doesn't make you... That's a, that's a bit of a stretch to be like, hey, I want you to run the family business. Well, I want to make pipe bombs, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Light your car on fire. I'll teach you. I'm going to shit your car, then light it on fire. Mm-hmm. I always loved the end uh, fight scene because it's so ridiculous. I mean, at a certain point, she carries him. To yeah. the yeah. to the like boards behind him, and I was just like, "What are we doing here? <laughs> What's yeah. going on? Why okay. are we ninja throwing stars?" The him? thing that <laughs> cracked me up about that is obviously they're trying to get to help. What is her? What's her name? Maggie. 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 Maggie slash Catherine. They're trying to help her, and they're going. They're attacking this whatever cage thing that you want to call it. Yeah. At the strongest point of the gate. At the door? Yeah. yeah. Just go through the fence stuff. I know. You and I'm see like... the chain link fences, and if you've ever been a kid that was trying to get into the other side of a chain link fence, you know that the bottom of it is the weakest part, mm-hmm. because if you pull that up, then you can get under it. I'm like, yep. why? They started getting the idea yeah, when they did that. Especially these kids that are like, yeah. you know, these kids have committed some crap. So. Tracy did a B and E like five minutes. Like because you, you could see the idea of the end of it where they're pulling up of it and they're throwing weapons towards Maggie to to help her. I'm like, okay, yeah, Tracy, who's like, all right, you guys know how to break into this thing? She's like, all right, Doc. He's like, you're probably a strong dude. Start pulling up on it and you guys can get under yeah he was trying to rip the door off yeah i'm like you could probably pull the thing hitting the door with what was it a a sledgehammer or something yeah Yeah. i'm like what are we doing like hit the fence with the sledgehammer go after the fence part which is the weakest part go after that not after the strongest part of the gate yeah and i'm like i don't know tracy maybe not light the pipe bomb until we get the door off or the door open or you know give give some sort of uh protection for uh Maggie to get out and yeah. something like, I don't know. There's, I mean, I know it's a movie. You're going to play it to the, to the wire at the end or whatever, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and Maggie just beats the hell out of her dad. Yeah, like, she, she breaks his hand, and I love it. She's, she's got like, a lot oh. of daddy issues. She does. And I mean, then she puts the glove on. She does, yep. I always loved that scene yeah, because the way she holds it. It's in yeah. your blood. I've always wanted to hold the glove like that. I've always yeah. been like, just put it on me and just for a minute. I just want to hold it. <laughs> just I think you, you would have to do that. Like yeah. If you ever put the glove on, like, you'd, you'd have you'd, to make it make that noise. Yeah. You'd have to. You'd have to like yeah. open your hand fully. Just I mean, yes. Yep. And like then you can't not do that. Yeah. And then she kills Freddie. Well, she stabs Freddie in the stomach with his own glove. Which yeah. Is I mean, and Freddie's been stabbed with that glove a few times. Shoved the pipe bomb in his chest or something. Yeah, and then Freddie's last line is kids. (laughs) Kids. Mm -hmm. Damn kids. And then Maggie's last line is Freddie's dead. Yes. (laughs) And that's how the movie ends. Yeah, Yeah. and like, (laughs) it's so cheesy. Like, She has that weird, like, smile like freddy's dead well the like, thing before Jesus. that too is like what the pipe blow the pipe bomb blows up freddy and you see the three demons oh escape. you got um yeah no no uh you get the the mouth zoom yeah, yeah. Like the two into heads the, mouth, yep. into the head of freddy mm-hmm. um this was new line's first 3d movie ever oh also okay. so that explains a lot of the cheesy yeah close camera shit um this actually, uh, uh, this September, I think, is the 30th anniversary mm-hmm. of this film. Oh, so my goodness. Turns 30. Kind of, yeah. wow. wow. Where's the time gone? It makes me feel old. Yeah. I know. I remember renting this movie. I probably did it in 91 because I was six. Yeah. Probably. So I didn't probably, I probably rented it 97, 98. I probably watched. I mean, it six on, was a little young, but I, I was watching Freddy before yeah, then. I probably already. watched it on cable for the first time. I remember watching it, and I remember being so in awe of it. I loved because it was so much of the '90s pop culture. Yeah, right. Like it had the video games. It had Carlos from fucking <laughs> Pizza. Glove. Like at the Power Glove, it had 
It had just the 90s, and the, I was the, all the about Johnny, it. The Johnny Depp uh, anti-drug PSA. Yeah, right. Roseanne Barr, for some reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had, this thing was just, deliciously 90s. It was deliciously 90s. And even uh, even one of the things, and I never could get it out of my head, when he goes after John Doe's um, uh, parachute, yeah. when he's falling to earth yeah. and he's doing that spinning thing where he's in, the, I'm like, it's a 90s music video. <laughs> like, it's what it is. Yeah. And I just, I, every time I watch it, oh, I just Oh, the other thing it. we forgot to mention too that makes it so much 90s is all the power ballads that they had. Oh, yeah. It, because it, they had the power brilliant. ballad at the beginning of the movie. It is, and it's the 90s rock music before grunge hit it. Yes. So it's it's pure mm-hmm. like 90s, yes. like it's, it's coming still, from the 80s. It's still that straight 80s, yeah. like late, late 80s that was hitting this. Because I mean, the movie came on 91, and, you know, so they probably yeah. filmed the late 80s and you still yeah. had I think it was it a was it a twisted sister song at the end of the movie or? I, it might have been I don't remember I, I don't remember because I, I thought it said D Snyder or something because I'm like it might have been I don't know been. but it was definitely that 80s late 80s early 90s like power ballad oh yeah, yeah. to the rest in peace montage we get at yes. the end of well, one of the last kills. things I do have to mention since we all have fond memories about it she's not here so she can't say this but I think this was Kim's first introduction into horror because mm. I've heard her tell her story about how she got introduced to Freddy is that her older brother was watching this movie and her mom told her specifically do not go watch that movie so she snuck into well, it of course you have to, to like any good child yeah. she no, snuck I into it scared, it scared the <laughs> shit out of her and ever since then she's loved Freddy mm-hmm Yep. No, I I was introduced to Freddie with the first one, and yeah. then I remember like Nancy's such a badass. Like I remember being like so into to Nancy. But by the time I saw the fifth one, because uh, Dream Child is my favorite, it's still my favorite. Uh, I was fully on. Like, we even get a yeah. producer Robert Shea cameo. We do get a Robert Shea cameo in this one. The ticket, the ticket, mm-hmm. and he's, agent he's, in he's been a producer on Freddie for since the first one, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Because, yeah, Lynn Shea was in the first one. Yeah. She has, yeah. So I, I believe that he, he's he been with it for a long time. Uh, but, yeah, it's such it's such a great 90s nostalgia movie. Yeah. For those of us who grew up in the 90s. I don't know what it would be like to watch it, like to watch the series today. Because not that I watched them as they came out, but, like, I did close to it, you know? So it was, it's, I wasn't that far removed from... Like, it was an 80s movie, but I was, like, five years from it, you know? like I always watch the... Fr- I know I saw... The first Freddy movie I ever saw was the first one. And I don't remember in what orders I saw them, because I remember when they would do the Halloween movies or whatever needed. Oh, days, yeah. And they would come on. Mm-hmm. I remember... On our local channel, Fox 10 would show these, the horror movies or whatever need be, and they would show them. So that's my was introduction to Freddy because and I remember, Why don't they ever show movies in fucking order on TV? I know. Yeah. Why do they go out of order so much? Like, no, we're trying like, to yeah, watch. Like, even if you're like AMC, like, even you're like, like sometimes AMC, like during Halloween, they'll show like the Halloween's in order, but sometimes it's like Halloween 3, then Halloween 4, and then Rob Zombie's Halloween. Like, yeah, don't do that to fuck, me. Man? Don't tell like, me we're doing a Halloween marathon and throwing Rob Zombie's Halloween. That's not fucked just up. that, though, but they're in random, like, not in order. Like, I remember what? They've done the Child's Play marathons? Yeah. They'll do yeah. one, two, and then they won't show three, but then they'll go into, like, Bride of Chucky. Yeah, they never have three for some reason. I know. Why do they never yeah, have three? They always and why do they three. always show Seed? Seed is yeah. the worst of all of them. <laughs> don't show Seed. They'll yeah. show those. Yeah, maybe you're going to have a marathon, I guess. And it makes no sense that they never show three because I know they have the most issues with the first one. I have no issues with three. I've always loved three. But again, this is my childhood. Yeah, they have have so many rights issues with the first one. So it's like, okay, you have everything you have for the third one, but yet you're showing the first one. So I don't get it. It's it's all a bunch of crap. Mm -hmm. Rights or whatever. I'm like, people want to see your fucking movie. Just fucking put it on there. If you're going to have a marathon... Have a marathon. <laughs> show them all. <laughs> don't don't jump don't around. Don't show them out of order. I mean, I mean, they do it all the time with fucking Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. You'll get sucked into those marathons. I know I you know. can't. You cannot show me Back to the Future without having all three of them. Like, yes. There's no fucking point. Like, no. please don't ever show Back to the Future just one of them by themselves. Mm. And with Freddy, I can do a Freddy marathon, but I can also do one off at a time too. Yeah. Like yeah. Freddy is one I can jump into, jump out of at any time. Yes. Well, see, like these are so different though. Yeah, they each but if it's like if are their own have, contained stories. If you have a movie like fucking Back to the Future, I'm like, you need to see all three of these. They're well, all yeah, connected. It's, it's one long it's fucking one movie, man. It's one story, yeah. Okay, so something related to the Freddy franchise, other than the first one, out of all the Freddy movies, which one's your favorite one? I already said mine. Mine's Dream Child. Dream Child, Paul? Mm-hmm. I would probably have to go with this one only because of all the backstory and lore that it gives you. Um, 
even though it has Tom and Roseanne. <laughs> Accosting children? <laughs> yes. Um, God, I really hope they didn't have children in real life. I don't know if it counts, but the one that I really, really liked was New Nightmare. Oh, it counts. Oh, I love. I don't know New why. New Nightmare but when it came out was my fucking jam. I love I mean, that movie think, with how creepy yeah. it was. I and do bringing love Nancy it. back. Yes. I mean, ugh. I do love it, and it's it's fresh and it's original, and it it's you know, um, it's something that you know, like wow, this is kind of a weird uh, you know angle to do this, yeah. and it makes sense. Um, but I don't know. I don't consider it in the originals. Like I, I don't do. know. See, like, that's the thing about it, though. Is like I mean, it is, but it isn't. I mean, if we're talking everything from. That. Nightmare one to this one, I would probably have to say, um, not Dream Child, uh, the Dream Warriors. Mm. Yeah, I like that one a lot. But yeah, like I said, if we're taking it the whole franchise into consideration, minus the first one, I think New Nightmare was my favorite. Yeah, because okay. it was just like you said, it was just so damn creepy. So if we're tying all of them, does Jason versus Freddy fall into that too, or not? I would say yes. Okay. Well, I'm still I'm still going with this one either way, but. I don't know. I just view it as differently. New nightmares, like because it has nothing to do with anyone but the first one. So it's like it's not a sequel, but it is. But it's like it brings it back to the original, and like I don't know. It's just so like different that it's like the original six are its own thing. Yeah, that is its own thing with only part one. Well, see, I love. I don't know. Like, I love. I love them all. The so. Dream Child because of all the backstory we get on Amanda and oh, his yeah. origins that way, see, and his yeah. birth, and, and that's yeah, that's see, one of I why I love you, that one. If you put all this canon together and you remade Freddy from the beginning, it, or I'm fucking totally my looking in the timeline that they put out in this movie, I'm yeah. like, um, I would like I want to make a, a prequel, a prequel about the the dad, like Freddy's real dad, yeah. Like, um, in the forty, <laughs> for his dads, yeah. yes, his yeah. dad. Well, no, like, like I thought, like, what if we had three different like killers in Springwood, and like, you know, it was like a detective thing in the forties, mm. but then all three of them end up in that mental hospital. So it's like you don't know which one of these guys is really Freddy's dad, but it's one of these three guys, and they all had traits that are like like Freddy. So yeah, it would be, it would so, work. Yeah. Do you want to put all your ideas out into our podcast I world? Do. I do. Is that what somebody, you want? I want someone to give me funding. All right. Yeah, well, that's not fund, what you fund said. It. Does somebody fund know? The, like, fund us. Because I think if, because we're all good Fred, Freddy, pretty big Freddy fans, and all the lore of it. I think you give us, me, me Paul, and Angie some money, we could. I'm, I'm a medium sized Freddy. Fan. Yes. <laughs> I'm not big. So call me fat. So. <laughs> hey, we're fat. We know it. <laughs> yeah. Then you just lead into child Freddy. I could get down on Child Freddy. Child Freddy in this movie creeped me out because like he has no lines. You only see him for about three and a half minutes. If the even kid that. was perfectly. Yeah. The kid too. was, yeah, and he just has that vacant look. Yeah, I didn't like the teenage Freddy. Yeah, I was they about gave to say us. that. I was he like, looked, who is this ginger with no soul? Get yeah, him out he was here. a he was a little like over the top. He like, tried too much. Yeah, to me, it seemed like he tried to act too much like Freddy. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't like if it was a performance or if it was just what they were going for in that scene. Like I get it. But at the same time, like, it's just too over the top. Like, well, see, yeah. and my problem with that scene, it was like, okay, it's not giving me the feels of this is a kid who's finally standing up to him, which was what no. the setup was, yeah. right? Like, and and it, it's giving you, like, that he's more superhuman than he should have been at that point. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's what I don't like about like, it. Like, he's just cutting himself. And I'm like, if he was already at that point of cutting himself and, like, you know, possibly getting ready to kill his father, like, this situation would have a either already happened or b have like come off way different yeah and they how played it off better in my opinion because like he's just standing there and he's taking it if they could have done the whole i would have appreciated it if they would have like okay he starts beating him and he starts cowering and then all of a sudden he just delivers that line yeah and just just kills him rather than just standing yeah there. show us the snap yeah you know show or, us or the... if or if he stood there and just took it and didn't have a reaction at all mm, yeah. yeah and then just had make bill smile or smirk and then have that line where like do you want to know the secret or whatever? Yeah. yeah. I think that would have been way better and creepier. But like just, just being that over the top where he's like, <laughs> like yeah. it's just too much. Okay, and then here's my thing with like, because I think that scene kind of fucks up the rest of the lore. Because like, how do you go from him being that and being there? And we're assuming he killed the stepdad, right? Yeah. Or the foster yeah. dad or whatever, right? Yeah. How do we go from being there to him just being a normal dude with a wife and a kid who's obviously a janitor or whatever? Yeah, no yeah. idea. 
So it's like that, like that. If you take that whole part out of it, and like the rest makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. And the rest like would be a great prequel to Freddy and everything like that. Yeah. But it's like that one scene. I'm like, it's just too much. Like it just doesn't fit with the rest it, of it. Yeah, it doesn't fit with what they were going for because they didn't. But, I don't think they wanted to show Freddy as weak at any point. Yeah. But they did a disservice because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it, it, and then and like the scope of like humans. Yeah, and they how, didn't show how progression. These, yeah, how these type of people would progress. You're and right. And it's yeah. also because we watch way too much stuff it's about true. serial killers, we so we know. <laughs> killer like, like, we know a lot more than they did back in '91. My yes. criminal mind's eleven ass is like, what was his stressor? What was yeah. this? <laughs> what was what his trigger? There it goes. <laughs> But yeah, um, so. I think uh, I think overall, especially the younger kids, the the little Kruger girl, I'm like, she is equally parts creepy and cute. Oh, and she's time. crying. Like I won't tell. No, the oh, part where gone. she uh, when when John Doe comes back and she's there, mm-hmm. yeah. the, the first time when he's laying in bed, and she's like, I won't tell. I'm like, Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he's just creepy. Um, I do have to mention the part where he keeps falling into the dream, like that second time. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was a kid. And I was always like, when there would be a dream sequence and it would start you over again, I remember I was always like, well, just don't get up, dude. Just don't get up. I'm like, what are they going to do then? And then he's like, you know what? I'm not getting up. And I was like, yes, good for... Oh, mm-hmm. fuck. They put it on fire. fire. Yeah. I'm like, well, at least that answers my question. Thank you for going there yep. and answering that question. Because mm-hmm. in every movie, as a little kid, I've always been like, just don't move then. And, and he just jumps out the window. I'm like, why are we jumping out of things? You are in a dream. Yeah. Like, yeah. Come yeah. on. Like it, he, he knew it's it a dream oh. sequence. I mm-hmm. guess. I don't know. I do love it. It's like, I hate this house. <laughs> There's so many one-liners in this movie. Yeah. So many. But this yes. is a great movie. I love this movie. Like I said, it's 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 silly. It's dedicated to Freddy's ridiculous kills. It got to it that is. point with him. He just got over the top. Like I don't know where it turned from rooting against him to all of a sudden rooting for him. Yeah. And that's where you get that in this movie. It's encompassed in it because, like you said, at that, that point you've seen him kill people in so many different ways. It's like, okay, how is he going to kill him this time? Yeah, and I think that's why they kind of wanted to end it yeah. and just be done with it because, I, I mean, it is it was a good stopping point for them and it, it does kind of, you know, end it. But I do love, like we said, Wes Craven's new yeah. nightmare because it brought back Wes and Nancy and... And after, All those characters, and, and this being the sixth one, I'm sure you know he was like, "I'm, I'm done." I'm done. Yeah, and then with and you Freddy really... versus Jason, you're really rooting for you know them to battle. You're yeah. not rooting yeah. for any of the humans. You're just like, "All right, you two go at each other." That's what like, I want. Like, everything else is in the way. Yeah. We're going to see some cool kills, and then we want what we want to see me is the these two fights. Of your, of yes, your like these two are going to fight, and we want to see them fight. Yep. And so, yeah, it, I mean, they did it. Well, it, it was definitely getting to a point where Freddy might be overdone. Yeah. And then so with having, you know, Wes come back and bring him back for another time and then him just battling Jason, which kind of put an earmark on, I feel like, Jason and Freddy's. Yeah. Both of their, it kind of both wrapped their stories up. And, and it kind of all went to shit after the, that movie for it both did. franchises. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. because they started trying to reboot and well, yeah. yeah, all that jazz instead of just... I don't even know what they could do. And now Friday's stuck in some legal hell, I think, still. A lot so. of legal hell's going on mm, with nice. our a lot of our old franchises. But I'm kind of okay if Friday gets stuck in hell and doesn't make any more movies. Like, I didn't mind the reboot. I it wasn't bad. En- I did not enjoy it. It wasn't bad. But I don't know. Was it a reboot as much as like just like a random... I know, just another one, it sequel. seemed. Like- the thing that I did appreciate about it, and I know I talked about this with a, another friend about it, is the thing that I appreciated about the reboot is they actually made Jason fucking run. Yeah. I don't remember that. I, I, I vaguely remember it, but yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't a bad movie. It just like... It didn't go anywhere new. It didn't do anything. Yeah, All it, it did was, was just update the the, char- the characters around Jason. Yeah, yeah. it just, just kind of to updated today, like, the teenagers. Yeah. But like, yeah, and then we kind of saw that he was living underground, which I was yeah. like, no, he has that weird gross shack with his mom's head in it. Like, yeah. don't change that. No, I yeah, yeah I wasn't into and it. And like, is he, is he hunting and fishing and just, you know, his whole time? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> get it, man. Like, <laughs> but that was Freddy's Dead from 1991, starring the amazing Robert England. Oh, he needs to come back and do cons. Mm-hmm. I think he's well. He's working now. He was yes. doing Stranger Things for a long time, but I think they he's finished got wrapping. The, he's got the show. Or I think they wrapped. Yeah. The other show is. Yeah, it, he's is got that, that Travel Channel yeah. show. The travel Channel. Yeah. yeah. So he's out there. He's still doing stuff. And he, if you do get a chance to meet him at a con, he's very nice. That he is. We met him years ago. Yeah, but next week will be July. 
And so we will be back next week with summer camp stories. Yes. 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 And we are starting it's off. It's summertime. It's summertime. It's hot. It's so fucking hot. Everywhere. Everywhere. It's we're all dying. The Portland sun is trying is to murder right us. Now. Oh yeah. I saw in Canada it was 116. I was Yikes. like, these Canadians aren't gonna last. My there was bears are swimming. In Portland and they were showing us their temperature thing on the porch and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't gonna we are, the sun is just trying to murder us. So we're gonna stay inside and watch summer camp movies. This is what you for all July. get. <laughs> this, is, this is what all you states that usually make fun of Arizona in the summer. Mm-hmm. This is what you all get for making fun of us. Yep. I'm like, I can handle it. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll go outside right now in 120. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, we don't even go outside. We're just used to being like, no, you stay inside. Yes. You just stay indoors in the AC. You can't outside, go outside. Like, outside can, bad, inside good. I can go outside. Outside's trying to murder I'm us. I'm fine. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> well, I'm white. The I've sun is to, literally trying to give to, me to, cancer every time I get out there. <laughs> I've gone to football games outside in August wearing jeans, man. Yeah. I'm fine. Nope, I'm out. I'm too Caucasian. <laughs> Just trying to murder me. But we'll be back next week with the ultimate summer camp movie, Sleepaway Camp. Yes. Starring Felissa Rose, who's amazing. She's so sweet. Again, if you ever get a chance to meet her at a con, go meet her at a con. Yes. She's great. One of the sweetest ladies you'll yes. ever meet in person. So we'll be back next week to talk about pickles. pickles. And uh, <laughs> pickles? Pickles. Should we mention dicks? Mad uh, Monster? Uh, <laughs> Pickle dicks? Can. What are we talking about? Um, but yeah, we're going to try to see if we can track down Felissa this weekend at Mad Monster, which is our home con here She'll in Arizona. She'll be here in Phoenix this if weekend. Yeah. Fourth of July weekend. She will be here. Well, uh, yes. Yeah. So, so we're, we're you guys, if you guys her. are going to be there, well, you can look for us. I don't know look if you know us. what we look like, yes. but uh, we'll probably be wearing a Scary Nerd shirt or have some sort of Scary Nerd stickers. We, Scary Nerd will be at Mad Monster this yes. weekend. So come say hi. We'll try to say hi to you guys. Well, I'll be masked because that's the rules. Yes. Even though we're vaccinated, yes. we will still be masked. I'll anyway. wa- I'm going to wear my shining mask. Then. Are That's you? how you can yeah. identify mm-hmm. me. I'll have my it one on. I'll have either my Freddy mask or my Jason mask. I well, I've okay, do you have a do you have a problem with uh, commitments? All because I already said I'm wearing my shining mask. I'm wearing can you commit to a mask? Depends on what shirt I'm going to wear. If I wear my Freddy shirt, I'm wearing my Freddy sh- Freddy mask. If I wear if you're wearing a your Freddy shirt, why would you wear a Freddy mask? Wear a different mask. You're going to mm-hmm. accessorize and yes. and, and match. Nice. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know what shirt I'm wearing, but I'm probably going to wear my shining mask. So. All right. Well, while the boys get their wardrobe in order, <laughs> <laughs> you guys can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can support us on Patreon. We're going to patreon.com backslash scary nerd. And we will see you next week with Sleepaway Camp. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye.